10 minutes to film this, I'm gonna have to leave. Okay, bye. I love you. We love you. <laughs>today i'm here with my august wrap up part two for 2019 i read a total of 10 books this month so the first five are in part one so check that out if you're interested and these are the next five so without further ado let us get started the first book that i have is rooms by lauren oliver and i end up giving this a 2.5 out of 5 stars it follows the death of richard walker who leaves his ex-wife carolyn his very troubled teenage son trenton and his daughter minna alone they arrive at his estate hoping for their inheritance but when they arrive there they realize that they are not alone there are actually ghosts living in the walls who want to reminisce about their past lives through the creeks in the house that only Trenton can hear. I was not the biggest fan of this. I was planning on giving it a lower rating than I did, but the last couple of chapters definitely piqued my interest. For the most part, I was bored with this book. I didn't care about what happened to any of the characters. I didn't care about any of the backstory and how they got there. I didn't even care about the ghosts, which I thought I would. I was also under the impression that this was a middle grade book. I do not know why I was under that impression, but within the first like 15 chapters, people were boning, there was a lot of sex, and I was just like, oh wow, this is definitely not a middle grade book. So that was a fun experience. <laughs> so yeah, that was basically the highlight of this book for me, was just thinking that it was middle grade and then being thrown with sex in your face. So. That was really the only thing that brought the book up for me, so take that as you will. The next book that I have is Five Feet Apart, and this is by Rachel Lippincott, and I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. It follows Stella, who has been in and out of hospitals for as long as she can remember, battling cystic fibrosis. She is on the waiting list for new lungs, so she will do anything to stay healthy, and that's when Will comes to the hospital, who is another patient who has CF, and everything changes. This is both a heartbreaking and hopeful story. I really enjoyed the two main characters. You're definitely rooting for them the entire book. I really enjoyed the alternating perspectives between Will and Stella. It definitely drew me into the story more. I loved the supporting characters, especially Poe. He was just so supportive and loving and he was probably my favorite. I know that in a lot of reviews people complained about the writing style and the overuse of exclamation points, but I ended up listening to this on audiobook so I didn't have that problem. I don't know if that's something you guys would have a problem with, but I guess be aware of that going into it. The book definitely had its problems, which is why I only gave it a four out of five stars. It uses the bury your gay trope and the love conquers all trope, which I'm not a big fan of either of those, but it was still enjoyable, so four out of five. The next book that I have is called The Best Lies, and this is by Sarah Liu. I ended up giving this a 4.5 out of five stars. First off, I love this cover. It's one of my favorite covers ever, but this follows a girl named Remy who has a best friend named Elise and a boyfriend named Jack. And then one night, Elise ends up shooting Jack in the chest and claims that it is self-defense and Remy has to decide whether or not this is the truth or if something more sinister took place that night. The book is heavily focused on toxic and obsessive friendships, which I haven't read many books on this topic, so I really enjoyed this. Right from the first chapter, I was instantly hooked with the story and whether Elise was telling the truth and what Remy was going to decide to do. I really liked how the dysfunctional family life of both the girls were shown in this. I think that the book did a really great job of showing that sometimes love can turn toxic and it can become controlling and you know sometimes it's okay to take a step back and do what's right for you. I really liked both Elise and Remy. I don't know if like is the correct term I should use for it because I didn't really like them. I think I was just intrigued by them and their story. Like I said, I was instantly hooked and needed to know what actually happened surrounding Jack's death. The reason I took off the half star was the insta-love between Jack and Remy. They literally meet for five minutes and then suddenly they're in love. I'm not a fan of insta-love, but I still really like them together and I thought that they had a very strong relationship. So we're only taking off half a star. We're being generous today, but overall, like I said, it was really enjoyable. I definitely recommend checking it out if you want a book about toxic friendships. This one's really good. The next two books I'm going to talk as a pair because they're from the same series. The first one is Dorothy Must Die. The second one is The Wicked Will Rise. These are both by Danielle Page. They are part of the 
the Wicked Will Rise series, Dorothy Must Die series. I don't actually know what it's called. So basically everybody knows the story of Dorothy from Kansas, but nobody really knows the story of Amy Gum, the other girl from Kansas. She arrives one day in Oz and she is recruited by the Revolutionary Order of the Wicked to assassinate Dorothy and end her evil reign on Oz. And it's like the story of that. So I gave the first book a two out of five stars. I don't know why. I didn't like it, but I didn't like it. It just felt extremely dragged out for me. It's like 450 pages and it could have been at least 100 or 150 pages shorter and still got its point across. There wasn't really any plot you were following. Most of the time I was just bored. I was also just not a fan of Amy. I thought she was very annoying and I just didn't really care for her. I also didn't really care for any of the supporting characters either. The only one I liked was Dorothy and I don't even know if you could say I liked her, but she was my favorite out of everybody. I was also not a fan of the insta-love in this book. I personally think that the book could have done without the romance at all. I did pick up the second book just because I owned it already so I was like might as well pick it up see where the story goes because the last couple of chapters actually was when a plot was established so we moved on to the second book which I gave a three out of five stars. I did enjoy this more than the first book in the series but it still wasn't anything that like blew me away. I still wasn't a fan of Amy in this book but I did like her more than I did in Dorothy Must Die. I still am not a fan of the romance in the book but you know, apparently that's a thing now, a very big thing in the book. This one was definitely more fast paced than Dorothy Must Die, but it got to the point where it almost felt rushed. This one was only 291 pages, something like that. The other one was 451, so that's a big difference of a chunk, although I do think that this is a better size for these stories. It might be better if it was like 300, 310 pages kind of thing, just to like wrap it up and not have to like squeeze everything in really small, if that makes sense. There isn't really much of a plot in this one either, but I was more entertained than the first book, so I'll probably continue on with the series only because I own the books, so you might as well finish them, but nothing that like you need to instantly go out and buy right now. Alright guys, so that was my August wrap up part 2 for 2019. Check out part 1 and let me know down below if you've read any of these books, or what you thought of them, and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye! Yeah. <laughs>